Let's go on home for the night. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. I've just realized it's actually day nine. Oh. Um, hmm. I regret that. After easing into the first week on the river, I still feel like I'm rushing. So given the lovely shady campsite I've woken up to, and the stunning day it's turning into, I've decided a short day is on the books to start getting myself into river time. Just making the most of the sun being out and drying my quilt for a bit. such a gorgeous day today. I'm going to sit here and enjoy this brunch and slowly pack up and get it back on the river. So it's only 1.30. <laughs> I'll get a couple of hours of paddling in and that'll be enough. Maybe three. I think I've found home for the night. This is a great little sandbar. Well, beach on Crown Land. Yep. I think that'll be very nicely.
Got some noisy neighbours, but it'll be alright. Look at this camp spot. Perfect beach for pulling out on. It's going to be in full morning sun, which is perfect for drying the tent out. And look how flat that land is. Just brilliant. There are some calves in the paddock, but they just saw me and took off at a rate of knots. So they probably will visit during the night or in the morning, but that's okay. I woke up to a high river this morning. Uh, I left my canoe high and dry on the bank last night and I found it floating this morning. Lucky I tethered it last night. Phew. Okay, I'm just cooking my egg sandwich for breakfast. Not in a hurry today either. And they're almost ready. Cooking breakfast actually lets me have time to air the tent out. Because uh, it has been, it was a massive fog this morning, and most mornings there is some, a heavy dew. So it takes an hour or so for the tent to dry out. I do wipe it down, uh, but it's still, um, the inside's a bit hard to get to because it's all attached. One of the downsides of having a tent that goes up, up in one go. She's a fast current today. Okay, day eight. Off we go. Ah, oh, it's gonna be such a good day today. I can feel it. Feel it in me bones. Well, I feel like I'm getting in the groove of it today. Ooh, hang on. <laughs> just getting sucked into another strainer. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I really feel like I'm settling in. It's um it's starting to feel real. Well, that's embarrassing. I've just realized it's actually day nine, not day eight. Uh, it, it took less than two weeks for me to lose complete track of time. <laughs> oh well, I guess I'm on river time now. <laughs> Cracker. So I'm starting to feel more okay with starting late, um, finishing early. The whole plan that was that was that I would only do an average of 20 kilometers a day. I wonder what that is. 
an anabranch of some kind that you definitely shouldn't go down. <laughs> Okay. Whoosh. You really feel how fast you're going when you go past those. <laughs> G'day. Okay. How's it going? You successful yet? Nothing. Nothing. Not a thing. Ah. What about you? I don't fish, so no, nah, nothing. Oh. <laughs> where best did you put that in it? At Walwa. Oh shit. Oh gee. So I found this blackberry bush and although this is not easy yum! Feral blackberries are a huge pest and they're terrible but damn they're tasty they're so much better than the shop bought ones The very first cliffs I've seen on the Murray. There are only baby ones. <laughs> Given the river is flowing so nicely and my seat is so comfortable, I've decided that today I'm going to have lunch still moving. I've got some Vegemite, I have some butter, I have some Jats or Savoy biscuits depending on which state you live in. I have a little iced tea sachet which I'll chuck in my water bottle in a bit and my little knife and fork set. Jats with butter and Vegemite. It's very simple, it's very tasty and you don't have to cook it, so it doesn't take very long. Make sure I'm not bashing into any trees or logs. My Nana would be appalled that I had just stuck that in my mouth, but sorry Nana. I do get out every now and again of the canoe to stretch my legs. But I just figure that sitting on the bank for an hour, or well, half an hour even, when I could be making two kilometres an hour, you know, just two, three kilometres. And I'm still enjoying the scenery as I go past. In fact, probably enjoying it just a weeny bit more because there's food involved. <laughs> so I've got my little baby now, Jean. It's only 400 mils, but that's okay. It can be a little bit sweet. And then, oh! Okay, so I might just uh, <clears throat> clean up all this iced tea that I just spilt in my pot. <laughs> oh, well, it's not going to be that sweet after all because there's only about half of it left in there. Bugger! Hmm, now, being washed into some logs, so... Have a quick little paddle over here. See how much more exciting lunch can be when you try to have it while you're moving? <laughs> that might be a lesson to not do that, but anyway. 
na. There have been a lot of campers on the river today. So this is the last weekend of the Victorian and I believe the New South Wales school holidays. Uh, so they're, obviously families are out making the most of it. is an awesome campsite but it's on private land so I'm gonna keep going bugger okay well <laughs> that was a, a pretty big day and it wasn't supposed to be I had intended to only paddle 20 k's today and at the 20 kilometer mark there was a fantastic little spot on a nice open bend with a nice pebbly beach. It looked like a golf course. I should have stopped. Mm. I regret that now. <sighs> so I kept going around bend after bend after bend after bend. <laughs> Either they were cliffs, which was quite unusual, uh, or thick, sticky mud. Um, and I finally found this beach that I'm on at sunset. I think it is on private land, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but there's no stop nearby uh, and doesn't look like there have been, um, it looks like an excluded zone, which is why I'm not sure if it is private land, but uh, I had to stop because I had to camp somewhere. <laughs> you know, I leave no trace anyway, so the, if it is owned by someone they won't know that I've been here. The problem is, it's opposite uh, four or five <clears throat> camper vans across the river. <laughs> They have turned it off now, but before they had their loud music on, which was just lovely. And there's a, a either intensive um, cattle farming or a dairy, possibly, behind. So all I heard for a good hour after sunset was moo, 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 moo. <laughs> that, that was fun. Um, thankfully, they've also calmed down, but there's also the um, Murray Valley Highway on the other side of the river not far from the river so it's going to be another noisy night the funniest thing is though that the reason I left that first perfect campsite was for noise <laughs> and of course they would have stopped chainsawing at sunset <sighs> I will not be so silly again <laughs> my core muscles <laughs> are really starting to tell me that they exist and um, this is good you know I'm clearly using the right muscles but uh, it's it's a smidgen painful tonight. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a bit pooped today. So I've got 16 kilometres until I get to how long today where I'm meeting a couple of Facebook friends. I'm leaving quite late uh, which means I'm going to have to paddle consistently to get there by the time I said I would. Well it was a cold night last night. I think it got down to minus half a degree. When it's cold I sleep very well so it took a little while to get going this morning uh, but once I was up and moving, it was fine. 
It's another day for drifting, not for paddling hard. <laughs> there will be paddling hard days, but uh, unfortunately today needs to be one. I just don't feel like it. Cockies make me laugh. They're so funny, they peek at you behind the tree. <laughs> mm. So I'm just coming up to Halong Memorial Park. Uh, which is where I'm going to meet Bill and Sandra and potentially Roo. Uh, <laughs> I'm half an hour early, but I can see a couple of people over there, so who knows? Maybe they're early too. <laughs> you found the spot all right. I have just had the most beautiful afternoon tea with Bill and Sandra and Carl and Barbara. They really put it on for me and we had a fantastic chat. It's really great to see some of my Facebook friends in, in real life as I'm travelling down the river. And I also bumped into Norm today. Um, he started up at Brinnenbrong Bridge a couple of days after me, so he's paddling a lot faster than me. And <laughs> he'll catch me in a minute. He just stayed for an extra cuffer, I think. <laughs> Adios. All right, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, guys. So I've just left how long? Uh, Coral is only 60 k's away, so it'll probably only take me two or three days to get there. Three days probably if we're going at the pace that I want to go at. Yeah, so uh, it's three o'clock. I'm only going to go for half an hour more or so and then set up camp somewhere nice. There's quite a few nice bends coming up. So when I see a good one tonight, I'm stopping. <laughs> That looks like a pretty good campsite, but it's a little bit too soon. <laughs> I should know better than to say something like that. The minute you give up a good campsite, expecting more of them around the bend is the last time you'll see a good campsite. <laughs> So I went ashore and flipped it up again and drained those, tipped those upside down and drained them. And uh, then I could get on the boat and sit on it and straddle it like a cowboy. So, turns out I'm finding myself in a fairly similar predicament as last night. <laughs> Have a pass all the nice spots. Can't find a decent one for tonight. We'll get there. There'll be something. 